a look at your clock. Now, look at your phone and your computer and the entire global financial system. They all show the same time and they're awful at it. Your clock loses a quarter second a day and your devices lose almost two. And that's a huge problem. Imagine if you tried to send a bank deposit and it was labeled two seconds after 3 p.m. but arrived at the bank at exactly three. The deposit would fail because it arrived before it got sent. At first, we tried to get better clocks, but even the smallest power fluctuations can knock a clock off kilter. So we had to invent a whole new protocol in 1985 called the Network Time Protocol to keep time. Crucially, NTP doesn't require everyone to have an impossibly accurate clock. Instead, it creates a hierarchy where each device periodically checks with a more accurate clock somewhere else and slightly adjusts itself to match, each on its own layers called stratums. At the very top, we've got stratum zero, the reference clocks. These include atomic clocks and GPS satellites, the most accurate timekeepers we've ever made. Atomic clocks measure the vibrations of cesium atoms, exactly 9,192,631,770 ticks per second. They're so precise that if you started one during the dinosaur era, it'd only be off by a minute today. Newer versions use strontium atoms cooled to near absolute zero. These? They wouldn't drift by a second in 15 billion years. But you don't connect to them directly. Stratum 1 servers do. These are run by research institutions and government agencies, acting as public gateways to atomic time. Then come Stratum 2 servers. Companies like Google and Apple run them. They check in with Stratum 1 and distribute time to millions of users. Finally, your phone, your laptop, your smart speaker all sit on stratum 3 or lower, syncing with the chain above. It's like a global game of telephone, except instead of getting garbled, the message stays shockingly accurate. Most devices are within 100 milliseconds of atomic time. Atomic clocks define a second as 9,192,631,770 vibrations of a cesium atom. Atom. Newer versions, using strontium atoms cooled to near absolute zero, are so precise they wouldn't drift a second in 15 billion years. But you and I don't access those directly. That's where Stratum 1 servers come in. Computers directly connected to Stratum Zero clocks. They're run by institutions like governments or research labs and serve as the first public timekeepers. Next are Stratum 2 servers, which get their time from Stratum 1. These are the most accurate time sources available to the public. Big companies like Google and Apple run them. Then come Stratum 3 servers synced with Stratum 2. That's where most personal devices like your phone or laptop live. It's like a game of telephone, except the message stays almost perfect. Each level adds a tiny bit of inaccuracy, but the system keeps that margin small. Most devices stay within 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second of true atomic time. But this introduces a weird problem. It takes time for signals to be sent from one computer to the next, so by the time the signal for 3.02 p.m. at 1.0015 seconds is sent to your computer, it's already 1.13 seconds or worse. Isn't this just impossible? It's not, but it's a bit complicated. So let's use an example. Speaking of, thanks so much for all the support on the channel lately. It really means a lot, and I want to give something back to you guys. So do you need a job? That sounded a bit weird. <laughs> but whether you're a UX designer, app developer, freelancer, or just a curious viewer, I want to get to know you guys, share some UX and UI tips, and maybe even get a gig. So I made a Discord channel for us and want to make this the place to be for front-end professionals. And I'm having talks with people to get some employers in there so you can connect with them too and find some jobs in the future. I'm really excited to get this thing started, so I hope you'll join me. Let's say your laptop records that it's sending its request at exactly 30000 p.m. according to its own clock. 
the server receives that request at what it considers to be 3.0005 p.m. Remember, the server has the more accurate time. The server immediately responds, still at 3.00005 p.m. on its end. Your laptop receives the response at 3.0010 p.m. according to its own clock. Now, your laptop can calculate that the round trip time was 10 seconds from 30000 to 30010. Since the server responded instantly, it can assume the message back took about 5 seconds to travel each way. Knowing this, your laptop can figure out that when its clock said 30000 pm, the actual time was 30005 pm minus the 5 second travel time. So, 30000 Zero, zero, zero p.m. In this case, your clock was actually correct, but typically there would be a difference, and your laptop would know exactly how far off it was. For instance, if the true time at the server was 30008 p.m., your laptop would know it needs to adjust its clock forward by three seconds. In real life, these time differences are usually tiny fractions of a second, not whole seconds, like in our example. But the principle is the same. Think of it like when you really need to know what time it is. You probably wouldn't just glance at one clock, right? You'd maybe check your phone, your watch, maybe even ask someone else. You're basically looking for everyone to agree. This device does the same thing with its measurements. It wants to make sure everything lines up and nothing seems fishy before it gives gives you the final answer. But there's one more thing to deal with. Leap years. Or more accurately, leap seconds. We all know leap years happen because the Earth doesn't orbit exactly precisely, but the same is true for its spin on the daily. It's actually slowing down. Like, super slowly. So to make sure our clocks still match up with where the planet actually is, every now and then they throw in an extra second. It's called a leap second. Since way back in 72, they've added like 27 of these extra seconds to the main world time, or UTC. When that happens, all those NTP servers have to tell everyone about it so all the clocks stay in sync. Some big tech companies, like Google and Amazon, do things a bit differently. Instead of just adding a whole second all at once, they smear that extra second over a bunch of hours. They do this so nothing freaks out with a sudden jump in time. Because if someone really wanted to fuck with the world or the financial system, all they'd need to do is hack into one of these Stratum Zero servers and tweak the time by just a second or two and watch everything burn. And that wouldn't be good. Because of this, modern NTP systems have built-in ways to check if they're talking to legitimate and trustworthy time servers. It's like they have a way to verify the source. There's even a more secure version called the Network Time Security, or NTS, which adds encryption to the time signals. This makes it much harder for anyone to tamper with the time information your computer receives. So let's bring this back to your everyday devices. Your phone grabs time from cell towers, GPS, and Wi-Fi using NTP. Your laptop checks NTP online. Smart home stuff syncs with your Wi-Fi, which also uses internet time. As for those old wall clocks, you're still the timekeeper there. That one's on you, probably still blinking after the last power outage. Time feels invisible, automatic, but there's an entire hidden network out there working non-stop to make sure every moment you experience happens in the right moment, quietly keeping the world in sync. And it's not alone. Behind every search, every click, and every answer you get in milliseconds, there's a massive system at work.